What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. Today's video is going to be another table video. We've not done one of these in quite a while. So what I want to do is recap on how you read the dive tables and it's doesn't really matter which set of tables you use. Today we're going to be using SSIs. They pretty much all the procedure to read a table is the same. But what I want to do is actually break down a dive profile and talk about what each part of the profile, how it relates directly to the table and what it actually represents. So once again, I'm just going to be using SSI dive tables here. But you can do this with any other uh, training agency out there if you will. But basically I have a, just a standard dive profile and this is just a, a generic two sets of dives if you will. The first dive of course is going to be 100 feet for 20 minutes and then I'm going to have a roughly a three hour surface interval with a 60 foot dive for 50 minutes to finish up my, my diving for that day. And so what I've done is I've already worked it out but I'm going to review how to work it out on the dive tables and then I'm going to talk about each individual table, table one, two, and three, what they represent and then I've got a little bar graph over here that hopefully will make it easier for you to understand exactly what you're reading when you look at a set of dive tables. So when we look at a set of dive table, we understand there's three tables and each table does something a little bit different. So table one is basically going to give me a depth a time and a pressure group and what the pressure group is that's the amount of nitrogen that my body absorbed throughout that particular dive and of course your depth and your time underwater is what determines that so here I've got a hundred foot dive for 20 minutes and I'm gonna start here on table one and so if I start up here on table one we're gonna be doing air dives not nitrox dives so I'm gonna go down on the air table until I see a hundred feet and I'm going to notice that 20 minutes is my maximum time, no decompression time, maximum allowable time, Doppler limit, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to scroll over to I see 20 minutes here. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'll get a letter. And that letter, of course, is my pressure group or the amount of nitrogen that I obtained throughout the dive. And, of course, my letter, of course, is F. And that's simply table one in a nutshell. It gives me a depth, gives me a time, and it gives me a pressure group or a minutes of nitrogen that I just stored in my body. Pretty simple to understand. Um, what I've done over here though is I drew you a little colored graph here to represent that nitrogen. So the F that we are calling a pressure group is actually this blue area here. That's how much nitrogen I just stored into my body. So let's just think of this blue area here at the end of the dive. That's how much nitrogen is actually in my body. Then we're going to move over to the second table here and this is table number two this area is what's represented up here as my surface interval so table two is your surface interval chart it's actually going to give you a pressure group a surface interval time and another pressure group so what does that look like here on the table well I know that I ended in pressure group F and a really cool thing about these tables is there's arrows that just kind of point in the direction you need to go so I'm just going to follow the down arrow until I get to the F and then I notice the arrow is telling me to go to the left here and you'll see that there's a whole slew of number and what these are are minimum and maximum time out of water if you will. So my time out of the water of course was three hours so from pressure group F I'm going to scroll over to I see three hours and it actually falls between two hours and 29 minutes and three hours and 57 minutes. Now once you find that you're going to scroll on down, following the arrow all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see the letter C. And so what I do is just simply write the C on my profile. That means as an F diver, after three hours, I bled off enough nitrogen. Now I'm a C diver. Now, once again, don't let the letters confuse you because I'm going to show you here on the chart exactly what it looks like. If you imagine this chart itself as my body, the tissues of my body, at the end of dive one, when I was an F diver, I have, say, theoretically 20 minutes of nitrogen collected in my body. After a three-hour surface interval, I bled off quite a bit of nitrogen. And you can see that the bar graph has shrunk a little bit. I've went to an F to a C diver. Now, that C, once again, just represents how much nitrogen is still in my body. Sometimes we call it residual nitrogen. That's how much nitrogen is still in my body even after a three-hour surface interval at the surface. So table one, depth, time, pressure group. Table number two, pressure group, surface interval, pressure group. Group, And as you can see here on the chart, you can see that I bled off nitrogen after that three-hour surface interval. Now, moving over into the next dive, I'm going to talk about table number three. This is where we're going to have to calculate 
what that C is, how much of the residual nitrogen is still in my system. Because I've not actually got rid of all the nitrogen, I've just eliminated some of the nitrogen. So I need to calculate that C back into a number, back into a time, if you will, or a measurement of minutes to see how much nitrogen is still stored in my system. So to do that, I'm going to go to table three. And so table three here, it's going to look very similar to table one. I'm going to have depths over here, and then I'm going to have times over to the right. But you'll notice in each little block, I'm going to have a white area and a green area. And each one represents something different. The top numbers, of course, is what we call the residual nitrogen time. That's what's represented here on the chart. As you can see, even though I bled off some nitrogen, I still had a little bit left over. So I'm just going to simply transfer it over to my next dive profile because I still have it left over. And of course, the bottom number in green, that's my new adjusted no decompression limit or adjusted Doppler limit or my new adjusted maximum allowable bottom time. It all means the same thing. Depends on where you learn from and who your instructor is. It's going to determine what he calls it. I'm kind of old school because I just call it a new adjusted no decompression time. But I still need to calculate what that is. So to do this, I've determined that for my second dive, I'm going to go to a depth of 60 feet. However, I'm still a C diver. So I'm going to have to convert that C back into minutes. I need to go from a letter back to a numerical uh, measurement, if you will. So all I've got to do is locate 60 foot over here on the left. And I also need to locate C as my residual nitrogen time, if you will, or my pressure group, ending pressure group after a surface interval. So I'm going to intersect the two, and I notice that 60 and C intersect with 17 and 33, okay? The 17 is going to represent the green. That's my residual nitrogen time. That's how many minutes of nitrogen is still inside my system. Now, the 33, which is the bottom number, that's the new adjusted no decompression time. That's the maximum amount of time I can stay at that 60-foot depth as a sea diver or as a diver who has 17 minutes of nitrogen built up into my system. So what I've got wrote here, and this is the way I grew up learning how to do it, this is called the RAT system, the R-A-T. So R stands for residual, how much is still in your system. A stands for actual bottom time or adjusted no decompression time if you extend it to the max, of course. And then I've got T for total bottom time. So the A is what I really want to focus on here as far as the, the physical part of the diving. So when I make this dive to 60 feet as a sea diver, I'm only going to stay under the water for a, a total of 33 minutes. However, what I got to tell myself when I'm doing the math is up here in my brain, I got to tell myself I'm actually there for 50 minutes. And the reason I did that was is I took the residual, how much is still left in my system, and I've added the new actual to my bottom time or my theoretical bottom time if you will and that's going to give me a total of 50 minutes underwater so at the end of this profile when i look at table one again i'm going to profile it out as a 60 foot dive for 50 minutes just understand the actuality if you will you're only there for 33 but you got to tell yourself up here in your head that you're going to be there for 50 minutes so going back to table one of course where i got depth I've got a time, I should be able to get another pressure group. So what does that look like on table one again? You come back to your depth, here's 60 feet, and I'm going to scroll over to I see 50 is my total max time, if you will. I'm going to extend over to 50 minutes underwater, and I'm going to follow down the arrow to my new pressure group, which is H. And once again, here on the color graph or the bar graph here, we can see that I added my residual to my... Um, new adjusted no decompression time and it gives me that total time so this once again represents my body and the storage or the absorption of nitrogen after table one i was a, or your first dive and according to table one i was an f diver i stored a certain amount of nitrogen after my three hour surface interval i was a c diver because i bled off a certain amount but i still had a little bit of residual left over i'm going to transfer that over to the next dive and i have to add it to my new adjusted and actual time and it's going to give me a total time underwater if you will so my new depth new time going back to table one gives me a new pressure group so table one table two and table three what does each one to do just to recap Table one gives you a depth, a time, and a pressure group. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like here. Um, I'm going to use the orange marker, if you will. So table one here gives me depth, time, and it'll give me a pressure group. Okay? And so what does table two do? I'm going to use the green marker, if you will. Table two here is going to give me a surface interval 
or a pressure group, a surface interval, and another pressure group because that's where we bleed it off. And of course, table number three here, I'm going to use the black marker to make it a little easier for you. Table number three is going to give me a pressure group combined with a depth it will also give you a residual nitrogen time and a new adjusted no decompression time. And then of course, once I have a total built into it, I can actually go back up here to table one. So I'm gonna go back to the orange marker and table one will give me a depth, a time, and once again, a pressure group. So guys, that's what the tables actually represent. If you still dive with tables, maybe you've not made the transition into a computer system, or maybe you dive with the computer, but you still like to back it up with the tables. Hopefully this will give you a better understanding of exactly how tables work, how they calculate your nitrogen absorption, and exactly what they're tracking as far as your intake or your own gassing of nitrogen, your bleed off of nitrogen through your surface interval, and then how we have to add the residual back to the new own gassing limits. So guys, if you've got any more questions on tables or how they read or what they're for, please put it down in the comment section below. I really hope this helps you out. If it did, smash that like button for me. Let me know what you think down below. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.